Hello and welcome to Pennside Presbyterian Church. I'm Pastor Dave and we come to you once again with a word of hope for today. To begin, we have a beautiful tune from the Taze community in France based upon a prayer of St. Teresa of Avila, Nada de Turbe, by David Cullen. David? Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. Those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten. God alone fills us. Nada te turbe, nada te spante. Quien ya Dios vele, nada la falta. Nada te turbe, nada te espante, solo Dios basta. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten, those who seek God shall never go wanting. Nothing can trouble, nothing can frighten, God alone fills us. Thank you, David. Let us pray. Almighty God, light from light, who commands the universe and all that is made, your word is the power that makes whole what is broken, the force of good and the food of peace. Teach us now as you taught in the synagogue. Heal us now so that in all that we say and do, the freedom we have in you may be for others too. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture for this week is Psalm 111. Praise for God's wonderful works. <clears throat> Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of honor and majesty is his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Wisdom can't be taught, but it can be caught. Wisdom is more than head knowledge. History is full of intelligent fools. Wisdom is the almost mystical integration of knowledge and experience. Wisdom is the fruit that is born when Phi Beta Kappa goes through the school of hard knocks. We know wisdom when we see wisdom. We never forget it. I remember a member of my first church, Marion Hoover who I am told was once handed a check by John Wayne for $1 million to do oil exploration in northwest Pennsylvania. He was a very successful man, and this young pastor found him to be a wise man. Marion said things I have never forgotten. Don't drive so hard a bargain that you force a man to steal from you. And pastor, if you haven't struck oil in 20 minutes, quit boring. Cultivating wisdom is a prominent theme in Scripture. Proverbs and Ecclesiastes focus on the contrast between the way of the wise and the way of the fool. One of my favorite Proverbs illustrates the difference the way of wisdom can bring. Proverbs 17, 28. Even fools who keep silent are considered wise. When they close their lips, they are deemed intelligent. Abraham Lincoln may have had this in mind when he quipped, Better to be silent and thought a fool than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. Wisdom gives us the gift of perspective. It helps us to stay steady when we're in stormy seas. And as we enter the second month of 2021, I think we can all agree we are still in stormy seas. How can we grow in wisdom in times such as these? How can we stay steady in the storm? Consider these words from Scripture. 
Proverbs 1.7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Proverbs 9.10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. And as we heard from Psalm 111, verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Now, I may not be the brightest bulb in the box, but when the Bible teaches the same lesson repeatedly, I believe it's worth paying attention to. If God thought it was worth saying several times, then it is worth my hearing, believing, and living. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. I don't think this means God should terrify us and that we should cower before him. I do think it means having a healthy respect for what God can do and has done. We gain this respect by thinking about what God has done. We don't take God's gifts for granted. We cherish them. We treasure them. And when we find ourselves in times of trouble, we remember them. We resist the tyranny of the urgent, the loud voices that are demanding our attention and deliberately shift our attention to the work of God in our lives and in Scripture. The psalmist models this perspective. Psalm 111, verses 4 through 8. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He provides food for those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. With God's works in view, We can see our circumstances in a different way. We aren't helpless and hopeless. We are God's beloved children. God is with us, always. God is for us, always. When the storm is upon us, God is our shelter. When the seas rock our boat, God steadies our hand. When the door we want to go through is closed, God has a window open and a way for us to go. Wisdom isn't having all the answers. Wisdom is knowing that God has a way. Right now it may be hidden. The way may be unclear. But in God's time and in God's way, it will appear. Until it does, we choose to trust. We choose to respect all that God has done and dare to believe that God's past behavior is indicative of God's future performance. That creates the kind of person like in this story. A wise woman who was traveling in the mountains found a precious stone in a stream. The next day she met another traveler who was hungry. The wise woman opened her bag to share her food. The hungry traveler saw the precious stone and asked the woman to give it to him. She did so without hesitation. The traveler left rejoicing in his good fortune. He knew the stone was worth enough to give him security for a lifetime. But a few days later, he came back to return the stone to the wise woman. I've been thinking, he said, I know how valuable the stone is, but I give it back in the hope that you can give me something even more precious. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me something more precious. Give me what you have within you that enabled you to give me the stone. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Remember what God has done. Respect what God has done. Reverence what God has done. Take it to heart. In these days of chaos and confusion, walk in the way of wisdom, and you will not only find peace, you will be an instrument of the peace this world cannot give. When life rocks your boat, walk in the way of wisdom. Amen. Let's pray. Good God, gracious God, wise God, we give you thanks that you hold the future in your hand. You hold all times and all places in your hand. Nothing is ever absent from you. Your love is from everlasting to everlasting. Lord, in these times when there is so much turmoil, Lord, when stormy weather ruins our plans, 
when the ongoing coronavirus continues to hinder us and limit us, when we continue to endure quarantines and isolation and the frustration of waiting and waiting and waiting. Lord, in these times, help us to call to mind your love. Help us to call to mind that every meal is a reminder that you provide. That every time the snow falls or the rain falls and we have a roof under our heads, you are our shelter. That every time we take a bath or a shower, help us to remember that it is the blood of Christ that cleanses us from all sin. Oh Lord, you provide for our every need and you know us better than we know ourselves. Help us to trust in your love. Help us to walk in the way of wisdom that sees in all things a gift of your grace and a sign of your presence. O oh Lord, may all those who are watching find peace and grace in this way and on this day. I ask this in the name of Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the wisdom of God direct us. May the love of God go with us this day and forever. Amen. Thanks for watching.